What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And in this video we are doing the 33rd installment of Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing my Aero Classics 1 to 400 scale Republic Airlines Douglas DC950. This is another model that I acquired during the Airliners International 2024 convention in Kansas City and this is another one of these recent releases that I really wanted. If you remember the June 2024 announcement from Aero Classics, you'll recall the two DC-950s that they did of North Central and Republic. And the North Central had this exact same livery just with the North Central one swapped out in place of the Republic titles. So I ordered the North Central right away and I had plans to get the Republic. And I noticed that they were kind of sold out at a lot of places leading into Kansas City. So I was a little worried I wasn't gonna be able to find it. Luckily, Bushier USA had a couple in stock, so I took one and made sure to get it before I forgot it. So that's how I have this lovely Republic DC-950. So go ahead and move the pin and the model out of the way and you'll be seeing that pin for every model that I have acquired during any Airliners International Convention that I have attended previously. And I'll talk more about my plans for the series at the end of the video. Let's go and take a look. So we have the Aero Classics logo on the top. We have a cutout for the plastic cradle, Douglas DC-9 logo, one to 400 scale. Here's the bottom of the box, which has a DC-940 branding. And then this is the right side for the DC-950, which has the full uh, product code and just some basic details about the aircraft. Got part of the Republic livery and the registration, November 770, November Charlie, and the lovely Republic tail, which carried over from North Central. AC411328 is the um, item number. Then the adult collectible model warning on the top, and then DC-930 here on the back. Here's the back of the box, which is a DC-9 here, even though that is an MD-80 or is supposed to be an MD-80. Um, it is technically a DC-9 aircraft. DC-980 was what it was originally designated before McDonnell Douglas uh, took over the program later on. So that is everything there with the box. Let's go ahead and bring in the lovely model. And I know a couple people who've been really wanting this in 1 to 400 scale for quite some time, and I did hop onto that train as well. So I was really happy to see that they did this aircraft here. And of course, now that I have the North Central, I'm very fortunate to have both of them in the collection. And this increases my Herman count to eight right now. So I've got eight planes with the Herman the Duck on the tail. So good to see the number continuing to increase. Let's go ahead and get started here with our review. So starting off at the front here, we have the nose cone, which looks a little different compared to some of the other releases I've had. The cockpit windows also look a little different too. We have a little fleet code there, 869 is what it says. There's a little like light there. We have the L1 door along with some other details. Then we move into the lovely uh, blue and the navy cheat lines with the Republic titles above the passenger windows. Then we have some overwing exits right there. And then we have a little bit of a blemish right there. You can kind of see it there in the paint, but very minor, so not a huge deal. Then we have the registration in November 778 November Charlie, a little American flag on the Pratt & Whitney engines, and then we have the lovely Herman tail, which is a little modified from the North Central days because it has a little blue part of the cheat line there on the back of it. So Herman's moved up a little bit, but thankfully there's enough room for him to relax. And then here we have the right side of the aircraft, which has a smaller door and a couple luggage doors underneath. And then Herman, once again, making some kind of a reference on the tail. Now we'll take a look at the underneath of the aircraft, and there it is. No branding whatsoever, just a stand hole, and along with a couple small details. And then we have the beacon light on the top, along with the overwing exit markings on the wings. So a very lovely little model here from Aero Classics, and I think it is still pretty hard to find. And the North Central one, surprisingly, that one didn't sell out at Aero Classics Direct, but the Republic one did. So I found that to be pretty interesting. I guess the Republic is more sought after than the North Central, which is a little bit against what I would have thought originally, but maybe North Central isn't as prestigious of a subject as I thought it was before. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the real-life aircraft's history. So this first flew sometime in 1979. I wasn't able to ascertain an exact date. And this is the first aircraft that was delivered to Republic. It was originally intended for North Central, but because of the merger with Southern Airways that formed Republic, it was not taken up by them, and it was delivered to Republic in November of 1979. It was transferred to Northwest in October of 1986, where it wore a hybrid Republic livery, which was based off their later Mary Tyler Moore paint scheme. Also wore the bowling shoe and then eventually the final liveries. It went to Delta in October of 2008 and was painted into Delta color sometime after, I believe. And then after that, it flew for Delta for another three years before she was stored in 2011 and has since been scrapped. 
that's all I have for this retro review. A very lovely model once again, and I'll go ahead and talk about what I'm going to be doing here for this series as we move into August and beyond. So my plan here is to do more retro reviews on the models that I got during Airliners International in Kansas City this year because there are quite a few subjects that are worthy of a retro review installment, so you'll be seeing more of them here as we move forward. And once I get through those models, you'll be seeing some subjects from other Airliners International conventions that I haven't really taken a look at since I got them. So that'd be from the Dallas show in 2023 and then Chicago in 2022. And then from there, we'll kind of return back to sort of a rotating um, cast of other models that I have not yet shown here on the series. We're getting closer to 50 and definitely excited to keep this series running as we move into the future. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.